Wednesday. <laughs> oh, do you get them as well, do you, Sam? Pretty much every day, yeah. yeah I've like, started sending them just the fact, top of my head now. In fact, his new one, yeah, it was just the top of his head. Like did you like? Did you like Stuart? What you need to do, wait, wait. Have you got any eggs there? Put put two eggs next to the next to his head like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just draw a little fucking scruffly chin beard. <laughs> egg with a neck beard. Yeah. Neck, neck egg. <laughs> neck egg. Do you reckon you can tell the difference? Egg neck. Egg neck. Egg neck. <laughs> I can never get the right. Um, <laughs> He has to move closer. Head to head. Head. <laughs> that actually looks like someone's head on Sam's Head screen. or egg. <laughs> wait, let me take a photo. Wait, wait, wait. Are you on the massive sofa, Mark? Oh, yeah, man. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> Where's the dressing gown? I've washed it. Oh, it's in the wash. <laughs> I've not seen him. I've not seen him once. <laughs> that I've been in that for about a month now. That's why I've washed it. Get your juice. It's a mess, isn't it? You're a mess. Peel it off him. <laughs> <laughs> Bits of food in it, probably. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, like Mr. Yeah, Twit. But instead of instead of the what beard, I want, it's a dressing gown. I want one with loads of different pockets. One for like a pizza pocket, and then one with loads of sweets. Pizza. <laughs> yeah. One Bits. with like whatever else. Like otters eat. Kind of Fosters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're talking of that, I'm going to get don't, a beer. Don't bring out of Fosters, Mark. Bits of cheese. <laughs> I, think he's, I think he's moved up in the world to Budweiser, That's which is nice. which is a very small step up, but it's still <laughs> very. I'm going to go and see if we've got any beers. Yes, Matt. Here we go. It's like being in Weatherspoons all over again, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> still hung over. Yeah, we had a um, we had a Zoom like quiz last night for Jess's birthday. She had an old school gaming quiz. I think you know what's more important, Mark. And tonight was you should have <laughs> saved yourself for tonight. You need to change this so we can see everyone. Oh, yeah. Sort it out. Fuck, you know, I don't have to do anything on this. You don't know how to do anything in life, mate. I really am struggling. I'm going to struggle when I get released back into the real world. I think you've got a fridge in the room. Have you got That's a fridge amazing. over there? No. Oh, I thought you just went into the fridge to get some more beer. You oh. smoke? Yeah, mate, I used to, yeah. Now I'm locked up in a room. I've, I've run out of weed and... Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, cigarette. That is not. <laughs> that is not the alternative, Nick. No, it's right? really not, is it? I can't dis. I can't agree with that situation right there. I don't. I, I don't even think you should be recording this, Billy. We're just going to get late, mate. Yeah. Too late. Too late. It's live. It's live to you. We, the mate. world knows of your habit now, Nick. The world knows, mate. It won't help you, Mark. <laughs> you don't reckon? <laughs> <laughs> Add a little bit more when you say it like that. Yeah, it does. <laughs> what with this, with my grin? <laughs> Hope you've opened a window in that room, Nick. That's for sure. It's a mm. fire hazard as well as a uh, terrible, well, terrible habit. I don't. I hardly, I hardly smoke. Only if I like. Usually, if I go out and have loads of beers, I want to smoke. But on a normal like day, if I'm not drinking, I wouldn't. Oh, Matt's on the stout. Is that stout? To get it. Matt, Matt, need. <laughs> so, fine. How out. are we doing this? Because are we going to have to mute the commentary and stuff? Like, just mute the TV and that? Yeah. So, I think what we have to do is we're going to have to find a fight and we'll have to stream it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if I play it, if I stream it through my, my, It'll be my glittery. shared screen, glittery? glitchy. Try and sync it up. It's just gonna, yeah, and then just sync, each, sync it up with each other. Yeah. yeah. But we'll have otherwise, to it. it'll be a nightmare. We'll have to turn the volume down, won't we? Otherwise, you'll you get. Can, you can mute it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi! <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> We're just. Whoa! Fucking hell, Sam. What have you done? Oh, look at that. Pro I, reached, I reached for the egg and I spilled my beer. Uh, That's just typical of you. It is, isn't it? <laughs> He probably 
filled out with water anyway. It's all right. I'll sort it out. Blackadder's <laughs> ball. What, what fights are we going to watch? Do we know or are we just going to... No, I don't know yet. Awesome. I think we should... I, I reckon we should um, choose a fight each and because like, there's loads on YouTube and then... Oh, so I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. Let me get my link. They've been oh, putting yeah. a load of free fights out on uh, the UFC's channel. They put Robbie Lawler versus Nick Diaz up the other day. I, knew yep, I want to watch, I wanna watch yeah, Robbie Lawler versus, versus Heath in UFC 74. Jeez. I tell you what, is yeah, you going fight. back from there, Nick? Or yeah, would it be best to play a, like an event, like an like actual, a whole card, like a card? No, because no, yeah. shite. What? <laughs> Our favourite fight, surely. All right. Oh, oh no, I don't. I don't actually. <laughs> all right. Fucking hell. <laughs> if, if, if it goes well, fights. If, if, if all it goes of... well, are we going to make a thing of it and do Friday night fights? We really yeah. should. I'm up for it. Yeah, that'd yeah. be wicked. And then Nick, it just gives Nick an excuse to smoke more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Doing a and cake. More, to be Drink fair, cake. the more Nick smokes, the easier the rolls are going to be when we get back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Crack on, no, mate. Light up another one. I'll just stay on top. Then you won't be able to move me. <laughs> I have a bag tucked, tucked in my game. When eventually I do get you into a good position, you can just shut it in your mouth. <laughs> 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 the old Wagner Russell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Nick will be used to not being able to breathe because he'll be like, I breathe through these ears. They're so big. <laughs> I was born with no lungs. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Are we just sticking to um, fights? To what? Sorry, mate? Are we just sticking to MMA fights? Or are uh, we doing either. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Or the streets. The streets. <laughs> <laughs> Loads of Kimbo slice. Yeah. <laughs> if we if we pick a street fight out, Mark can give us a really good commentary because he's really good. <laughs> he's really good in the streets. Apparently. Yeah, that's it, mate. <laughs> Built on the streets. He's been telling me often through Instagram how good he is on the streets. Yeah, so. they're, they're the only fights that count, to be honest. You know. <laughs> All these pussy MMA guys with rules to protect them. Yeah, you can't, can't play De La Hever on the curb, can you? Careful, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, mate. That white belt. Careful, yeah. mate. That's not the white, white belt. belt, mate. Is that your old white belt? That's my white belt. Is it? <laughs> Did you go straight from blue from three stripes? Yeah, mate. Yeah. I'm really good. Yeah. <laughs> Who was the last person to pass your guard, Sam? Mark. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> Why? All you got to do is dodge with me. Careful. Oh, yeah, you have to <laughs> dodgy knees. You have to pass to the left. <laughs> Don't work. Not anymore, mate. Not since the lockdown. If you just go on the opposite side of his dodgy ear, you're all right. <laughs> we can't hear you coming. <laughs> you, do, you do just have to go left. You can't, I can't, you know, I can't actually exactly get my hook in with my right leg. <laughs> bit of spam they stuck on his head after he was in hospital. Well, my ear. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, <laughs> no. That is an ear, isn't it? <laughs> it's some. It's not really an ear. It's a bit it looks like someone's like plastered the inside. Yeah, it looks a bit like a bit of dodgy artex in. <laughs> <laughs> How's your ears coming along, Mark? It's, it's all gone down, mate. Bad one. Look at that. It doesn't look hard anymore. It's all right. I've got yeah, a little wobbly right. bit. That's it. About the rest of it. I know, right? <laughs> what about your hip, your knee, your elbow, your bicep? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, not doing too bad. I reckon about 60% on all of them. <laughs> your back's fucked. It's been like a moment of dressing down for a month. And and you've got the profile I've done for you, Mark, on the website. I <laughs> know, oh, it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> He's good. broken every bone in his body. <laughs> uh, every joint and lost all his hair. <laughs> you can literally see my hair get shorter and shorter and shorter. <laughs> it's just gone. Every month. What are you going to be like in a year, another year? Not be as bald as Sam, I reckon. No. Oh. no. <laughs> just dead. 
Just drag them. <laughs> He'll be like one of those grappling dummies. Yeah. <laughs> Just a head in a jar. <laughs> wheeling him home after. Like in Futurama. There's loads of good free, yeah. free fights on YouTube at the moment. So we've got yeah, Justin yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, let's have a look Michael some. Johnson, Henry Cejudo, yeah, that's, that's Marlon Moraes, which is awesome. Who is that? Um, Henry Cejudo, Marlon Moraes. Um, what was the? Uh, what was it? Michael Johnson versus Gaethje. Gaethje. Yeah. Oh. Um, Zabit versus Bochniak. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's an awesome that's fight. fight. Yeah, they let yeah. him go, didn't they? They let Bochniak go. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah man. And, he, and he, had, he had another really good fight not that long ago as well. And then uh -huh. Yeah, I saw that. that. That's uh, done that. savage. Gage well, versus Barboza. They just put up uh, Dominic off. Cruz versus Dillashaw. Oh, Stevens versus Duhoy Choi. Fucking A. That's a good Keith Herring. Man, you could watch all, all of these are sick fights, isn't they? Yeah, well good. <laughs> yeah, Dan Hardy versus GSP is on there somewhere. That's a yeah. good fight. Any CM Punk? <laughs> Just going to see if Bellator have got um, Michael Chandler versus. Uh, yeah, mate, they have. Well. They have, yeah. Bellator, yeah. Bellator have done their um, uh, got, 20 oh, best right. fights. Yeah, because that, that was wicked, that fight. I don't, I don't watch Bellator much. I just see no. stuff on YouTube, really. But Yeah, same. I just watch the highlights on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 20 fire fights on Bellator. Are you watching Otter, Otter Sanctuary TV, Mark? <laughs> yeah. And the first yeah. fight is Michael Chandler or Eddie Alvarez. Is that the one you're on about? Yeah. There's two, I think. The first sure the... Don't encourage him. I'm not encouraging him. <laughs> I need no no one needs any encouragement, Mark. For what? It's out of order, isn't it? Have you uh, caught up on the back catalogue of the podcast, Mark? No, I haven't watched them. I watched the Hannah one the other day. That was good. Yeah, I'm about oh. five five through, I think. I've just Quite done a of the Otter in, in there. Yeah, but I've seen that. I saw the one with Biddle and I saw the first one with and I saw the one with um uh, Lorna. Sorry Lorna, I your name. <laughs> <laughs> with old what's her face. <laughs> <laughs> that white belt. <laughs> We've got a um uh another uh, a female MMA fighter coming on. Oh, have you? Potentially. Yeah. Who is it? Millie, Millie Hawken. I don't know her name. Check her Instagram out. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't coming on anymore. She was. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and Kent Peters, if he can, if he can set his alarm properly. <laughs> yeah, that's mental. That is. <laughs> We must, this is twice we've um, supposed to have, have him on. That's a forfeit. The, the first time, the first time we got the time wrong. <laughs> by by four <laughs> hours. Shall by four, oh, by four, four hours. hours. <laughs> <laughs> so what was Ow. he just waiting for you to? Uh, time on by four hours. So well, eight o'clock doesn't sound the same. Canada is so big, right? We had someone from Canada the other day, and he was eight hours behind us. And so I assume that that was the same for Kent Peters, but he's in a different part of Canada, so it's only four hours behind us. That's how big yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's mad. But Nova Scotia is like right on the very uh, east coast of Canada, so it's like, do you know what I mean? It's the closest you're going to get to us, basically. There's a, there's a hilarious video of Kent Peters on the Nova Scotia like news. And they talked to him because he did a he did a video on his YouTube channel of him. Um, he did a TikTok of him like cutting open a hay bale, and it got four point nine million views. Holy right? shit! So they got so they did a, a news report on him. And he's standing there next to a hay bale, going, "Yeah, people are saying what's in there? Weed?" And he's like, "Yeah, it would be worth more than hay if it's weed. Maybe if it was cheese, it would be worth more." Like he's <laughs> like, just all on the news article. <laughs> 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 I watched it and it was well funny. He's like standing next to his hay bale like that. <laughs> he said, I've got 16,000 new subscribers in five days. Yeah, he had some, I was doing my research 
he had a bit of controversy, didn't he? he like, um, he actually got banned. It didn't he get banned from Facebook they, or Instagram or something? They like literally stopped him from. They like deleted his account basically. Oh, did it? Yeah, so he had to start again. So he had loads of views. Yeah, he had loads. Of, he had loads of followers, and he had to start all over again. That sucks. What did he, what did he do? Why, why? Why? Because of that video? No, I don't know. I don't know why. I think they made a mistake. Must have been using copyrighted. I think he used to break down fights as well. Break down techniques of other people. Right. Okay. So he used to he used to play the video of like famous people's fights, and then break it down and do the moves like right. in his gym. I think so, like someone would have complained or something about that. Yeah. Yeah, he was saying that he didn't even get a warning, though. Like, apparently you get three strikes and then you're done. But he just got deleted straight away. He oh. said earlier when he was messaging him, he said, he, he was like, he was like, oh, shit, man. And then, and then he, like, sent me a photo of, like, he was on his, like, um, Sorry, like digger that. barn. Don't worry, mate. And uh, I was like, oh, it looks well cold. And he was like, nah, it's only four or five degrees. It's all right. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> But when you're up north like that, mate, that is it's that's cold their all summer. This time. Yeah, that's all their summer, time. mate. Loving it. Yeah, it's There's a horse. It works, it works out now. I watched that video. He does like it's like a horse, horse. His wife's horse farm, so he's doing like all the hay for horses and stuff. That's what that's what he does. Right. Nice. But that um, uh, panda said he's four hours away from the nearest town, didn't they? Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Out in the sticks, then. Yeah. yeah. So that's mad. <laughs> but his jiu-jitsu looks amazing. He's a black belt in BJJ and judo. Mm. He, does, he does some cool breakdown videos as well, doesn't he? Yeah, that, that must, be, must be where I've heard his name before. Yeah, he does. So he's got, he's got a on, his icon on the uh, uh, Instagram is like one of those immortal choke cartoons. Yeah, because he's always wearing a, a hoodie underneath his gi. <laughs> yeah. It's so cold. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I hope we can all get back in the gym soon, man. On oh, me too, mate. Missing it so bad. Like, how long has it been now? I don't even know. I don't I've know. Had children have been locked up here for six weeks. Is that what it is? Six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a long time. It's hard. Has well, it I've been, been using my, my little dummy that I made, but not not every day. Just sort of once or twice a week, but only for. Yeah. 15 20 minutes, then it gets boring, so he keeps tapping me. So, <laughs> <laughs> at least you got a dummy to tap me. I've got just been tapping to air. It's on my <laughs> dummy. I just got a A4 of Mark, cut it out, stuck it to its face so that I can try to make <laughs> yeah. it harder. Yeah. I was pretending yeah. my dummy the other day on Noz's uh, beginners class on Monday. I was pretending that was Mark. That is yeah, a free strike white belt. You've got a proper target on you now. Yeah? Mm. Free strike white belt. Is he still free strike? Are you still free strike white belt, Mark? Yeah, that's how cool I am. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, I remember when I had free stripes on my white belt. Yeah, what was that? Nineteen eighty-three. Back in the Beatles 19, had just come out. The Nicholas, Nicholas of white I tell belt. you, you should take those those stripes. Mean a hell of a lot. At least two years of stripe, isn't it? God, it's got yeah. <laughs> I said, thought, it was, I said, uh, thought it was for me. I think, I think um, I think I'm still no good. I think we need to give Mark a, um, a tweener belt, but not yet, in a year's time when he's ready. <laughs> yeah, when I'm ready for it. When, we're when you're ready for a, for like at least five sections of blue around the white belt. Yeah. <laughs> Do you reckon they should give out stripes? Uh, when every when everyone's at a standard that you've set, or do you think they should do it individually to that person? So if that person is really good, they should take yeah. long to get a stripe. No, that, they get them quicker. They get them quicker. Yeah, a yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, I've seen it all the time. Anyone who's who's good, it's like, well, you look like how long you've been training, Matt? Not long. Uh, it's, it was two years in March. I think. And you're yeah. and you got you one stripe blue belt after two years. That's really quick. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Uh, mate, I was over three years for what, over three, three probably nearly four years. Of white belt, I was. Yeah, but but in saying that, I, I you know I'm there early a lot of the time, <laughs> and I do put in those like extra hours, and I train a lot of you know four days a week most of the time. So I do put yeah. in a lot more hours than a lot. Hey, you 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 two a week. So just you like, guys, you guys do so much more. Like if you break down the years into actual hours on the mat. Yeah, that's it. Like you've probably you probably done what I 
I done in four years in in like eighteen months. Yeah, yeah. Because because it weren't available then. It just was just wasn't. There just wasn't the time that you could do. Yeah, there was two classes a week in Ashford when I started. Yeah. Two class, two two hour classes so a week. That's Monday to Tunbridge for Wilson's afternoon at one like one o'clock. So that means leave at twelve and get back at four. Yeah. So that's your day gone, isn't it? On the side. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's interesting hearing you all speak about like the old days uh, with the old day and stuff. Like it's just it must have been just completely different. We're all obviously very lucky now that we've got that facility and all those classes. So and many more people. high levels as well. well yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, we were taught by blue belts most of the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> it was like we were yeah, saying like, it was like a big deal when a purple belt, like someone got their purple belt. It's like a massive deal. Like huge. yeah. And it's weird. I can't imagine Laurie and Chairs and that just being blue belts. Yeah. It's really fucking weird. Yeah. And their but, style back then are just completely different as well. Like when I do think mm-hmm. of Loz and, and Chairs and stuff being blue belts, I just think of them being proper smash like aggressive like, <laughs> pressure, pressure and that's that it is, not, were, mate. no so dead heaver or anything like that Laurie's exactly game is like. quite similar to when he was a blue belt to be fair it's just I a lot more intense he still loved the it's... high guard and close guard yeah arm bars like like he's still he's just got like so much more depth from every everywhere yeah. around there but you know he still had that like game that he liked at that stage he likes to elevate you a lot more than he used to he likes to get yeah. underneath you now like Single leg and stuff, and the double shin ride is like. Yeah. Who's this still talking about? Laurie. Yeah, yeah he, right. he always puts me in X anytime we roll, but I haven't rolled with him for ages, to be fair. Cause obviously he's Last like, time I rolled with him, he must have tried with me about 15 times. <laughs> I watched it, it was well fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You watched it, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was a mess. Like, Didn't he start when he was like 34 as well, or something like that? Yeah, yeah mate. Yeah, yeah, he, he's, he's, he told him. me that. That's. that's that makes me feel Man, better. doesn't it? It makes yeah. me feel a lot better because you always think, it, like, oh, yeah. I wish I'd have started when I was younger. No, yeah. he, he should, I'm surprised he didn't say about that more because I think that should inspire a lot of people. Like, so there's yeah. older people, obviously, that start all the time and like, yeah. that should give them a bit of hope to keep going. Yeah. Mate, yeah. John Archer is nearly 50, isn't he, mate? And he's like, savage. Who? Mm-hmm. John Archer, savage. Yeah, mate. Mm-hmm. He hasn't been about like, for a while, though. 50, 49. The body, the body of a 30 year old. A thir- the body of a t- of a fifteen year old silverback. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck it out. I was twenty four when I started. Mate, I, I, well, I, no, nineteen twenty four. You started. <laughs> 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 I, I wish I'd have carried on. I did go to Jack's just really briefly before he shut the gym down in Romney because it was yeah. down the road from where I live. When I was 21, and I, re- I regret so much that I didn't stick around. Carry that he had left. Yeah. yeah. Thing is, the thing is, like any time that you start is is the best time to start, isn't it? Yeah, because like, it's your because it's whatever is best time for you, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, I've, I've, yeah. I've done that so many times. Go, oh, I wish I did this. So imagine if you do it when you're this age, doing that age. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you can't you can't change anything. All you can do is go right. At least I'm not 50 when I found something. Yeah. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and because because it doesn't matter what like um, belt you are or anything like that, really. Because when you think about it, you like doing it. You're going to do it for the rest of your life. You want to keep doing it forever. So none of that shit matters. Just think, oh, thank God, I found something I'll enjoy doing that much now, and mm. hopefully I'll be able to keep doing it for ages and ages. That's all that matters. Is just having an enjoyable hobby, isn't it? That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And being able to beat Mark up is it also yeah, a bonus. That's... Yeah. No, it's not going to be the case forever, though, is it? Do you yeah, think? It will. Oh, oh, oh. One day. I, I reckon. I reckon you're you know a little bit scared about that, Sam. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, not, I'm, not, I'm genuinely not <laughs> scared. Not right about it. <laughs> the best, the funniest thing is, is because I'll, about I'll, me, I'll be but... older, and I'll probably start slowing down. But by that time, Mark will be so injured. <laughs> yeah. That's all you've anyway. got to count on. You just got to hope that I get so injured. I don't need to hope, mate. I don't need you to already hope. fucked, you mate. About. He's Dominic you Cruz of about. Jiu-Jitsu. <laughs> you don't have to worry, Sam, because when Mark tries to pass with a knee side, he's done even underhook, so I wouldn't worry about it, mate. <laughs> he dives in like that. Who's <laughs> <laughs> <Not his. laughs> <Please> first? <laughs> we should start praying, Mark. Yeah, I'm going to start, I think. Oh, mounted me the other week, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? 
<laughs> What's that? Mark mounted me, and I was, I was like, "What happened?" <laughs> <laughs> it's the Alzheimer's, mate. Yeah, I just <laughs> forgot. I've been where Fallen asleep briefly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Living up to the slot oh. name. Get this uh, get the dosser off me. Still couldn't find the finish though, could he? Oh, no, we didn't play the wrong, did he? <laughs> Getting back into half guard or single X. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get him. He doesn't know what to do from there. I'm surprised he even knows what the position is. <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? It's all down to the teachers, though, isn't it? You know what I mean? <laughs> Laurie, if you're watching this, it's unbelievable, these white belts. I'm not involved in this. I told you, I washed, I I washed my hands. I've washed my hands with Mark. Yeah. He's all losses. He's all losses. Oh, you weren't encouraging it. <laughs> no one's claiming him, are they? Is, you know, I'd have thought by now no, uh, he'd have had his arm around him, you know what yeah. I mean? I was, I'm surprised someone hasn't, you know... Taking him, him under their wing. Got him <laughs> under the wing. I think me and the salmon are going to start our own club, you know. I think you no, should. Right, 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 mate. I reckon you're, you're good enough. Yeah, low percentage, okay. risky. Oh, I love that. That was, <laughs> that was brilliant. brilliant, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> low percentage, risky moves. How <laughs> to get your back taken. <laughs> 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 Always look up when they got your back. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm amazed anyone can choke me with that. I know, it's weird. You've got my neck. <laughs> All right, Danny. Down the door. <laughs> <laughs> Nick looking nervous. He does look a bit nervous. I Why do you look so nervous, Nick? I need a wee. <laughs> go then. <laughs> Just go. Where? <laughs> To the corner, you're gonna mate. Go, if you're going to go, Nick, I'm going to go and get another Guinness. So, yeah, just go. Me. Don't don't worry about it. Just leave whenever you need to leave. I, see a beer I might not even come back. Let's, let's both go now, then. It's okay. Least amount of time. Oh, don't leave me! Don't leave me here with Becky. What? <laughs> 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 Where's Vic gone? In the other room. She doesn't want to hear me talk shit. <laughs> she is it enough. She is it enough. Nothing in another room. She's been putting up with it for uh, however many weeks we've been doing this. Yeah. Yeah, she's often elsewhere, whenever <laughs> you're about. She is, isn't she? <laughs> oh my God. What is happening? It's beautiful. That is terrifying. It looks like I've got a, pit, a painting on my wall, doesn't it? <laughs> it <Yeah>. does. <laughs> It's a salmon mount. It's a, a otter mounting a salmon. Where's the salmon? Underneath. Oh, it's where all our screens are. Oh yeah. Right here. <laughs> the otter, looking down on me. Oh my god, that's terrifying. <laughs> oh, please get that, that to be your logo. Yeah, you need to get an otter tattoo now. Yeah, go on, please. Yeah. <laughs> it needs to. I feel right like I feel like you've you've really embraced the name now as well. Well, I think you preferred it to the other one that was knocking about. The leper. Yeah. Still yeah. there. It's still there. <laughs> Just floating around yes. every now and again. It's not the same though, is it? It's not the same. I know, I can't believe I've managed to make that stick. One, oh, it's one fucking mental. Literally, no. no one has ever questioned it. I've had like two people <laughs> ask why I'm called the Otter, but people just call me that now. <laughs> no fucking reason. <laughs> I don't remember it. And there isn't even a reason for what it. What is the reason? I don't know the reason. I, I don't remember the reason. I was very drunk. I remember it being... Um, it was were, just that... Uh, uh, it was at Jim's party, wasn't it? Yeah, New Year's Eve, wasn't it? And we were all just yeah, yeah. drunk in the kitchen and we were like, oh, we've got to think of nicknames. I think you were probably mentioning how I'm called the Wolverine or something like that. Like a really... Oh, my God. I can't believe you're not allowed to give yourself a nickname. I it was... Uh, <laughs> but because of that, I was like, oh, you guys need a nickname. And then I was like, the Otter. It just came to me. Yeah. My favourite thing is... Uh, hearing uh, Loz call uh, refer to Chris as he always mixes up the first bit so yeah, it goes salmon. from the savage salmon to the satanic salmon, <laughs> to the the salmon. Yeah, yeah yeah there's been a, there's been a bunch 
It's brilliant. Yeah, it's good. As long as the salmon bit sticks, it's perfect. Yeah, that's all right. There is no doubt that nickname is well suited to that man. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get him on, you know. Yeah. We do. Yeah, mate. Yeah. Well, he's too busy. James gonna be on. He's too busy. <laughs> He's got, he's got, he's got his, whole, his whole booze collection. Um, going for a piss around the back of the camera. He's been around in an abandoned <laughs> warehouse, isn't he? Yeah, man, he found some fucking well cool place. It's got like ramps and shit, all like concrete built into it and that. It's well, fucking awesome. It? Yeah, man. Well, I don't know where it is. Somewhere in Gansford. Is it how is his shoulder? I think it's all right. I don't know, man, to be honest. I haven't spoke to him much about it. But I know he's skateboarding and that at the moment, so it must be getting better. But I don't know how like, sort of loose and how much range he's got on it or anything. Mm-hmm. He's definitely he's still got a lump. Last time I see him, um, and I went for a beer with him like a few months ago or whatever, yeah, he still had a little fucking lump sticking out of his shoulder. Everyone that I know has yeah. like done something that has kept, had that, though. Yeah, uh, I, that think that it, I, I think Ches said he's got a permanent yeah. lump now. So yeah. Yeah. I think it just stays like that. Yeah. Oh, man. Bad, isn't it? Yeah. Um, while, while we're here, before we're doing anything, should we, should we chat to Matt and Mark and Becky then as a thing? What? Should we chat rather than just chatting shit? Should we ask them things? <laughs> no, we'll just Hit me up, I'm ready. I'm interested to know stuff from Matt because Matt. Okay, then talk to. Let's let's talk. We're here. You don't have to treat it like an like you know like an official thing, but you can't you can't ask yeah, questions. Nick. Right? Treat oh, it like it's small man. Nick. You asked to go to the toilet. Yeah, Nick. You ask if Hi. you can ask a question. Hello. All right. <laughs> question number one. I want I want to talk to Matt about um, competitions. Yeah. Because. Who is that? Because Matt and I said this on the thing, and I thank you, Matt, for your very nice message you sent me. But you, you, I said this to Sam like ages ago. Is that when you you do that and you go to competitions and you don't give a fuck what happens, you just want to keep doing it and get better. Is that how you feel about? I mean, it's nice. Everyone likes it if they win, don't they? But if you lose, you don't you don't seem to give. Two hoots. It's just experience and learning and train and do better. Or, or, or you cover it up really well. I don't get I definitely do care. Like, big time. I feel shit after it. But my, like, the way I see it is my main goal is for me to get good at jujitsu. Yeah. And I know that I'm not the best out there. I'm not the most athletic and stuff like that. But as long as I'm getting better all the time, I don't really mind. And I feel like the competitions let you see uh, what's wrong with your game most. And as well, as, like mentally, every time I've gone to a comp, I feel like I've mentally got better as well. I know when to push and stuff a bit more. And yeah. um, how That's to what um, the, like that. that kind of said the other day, wasn't it? He said, he said, like, the other year, he competed every month for a year. And um, every competition he went to, he he was mentally better. You see, he didn't yeah. think he was better at jujitsu, but he was he was performed better because mentally he was he was knew what he was getting used to the feelings and the adrenaline and people being there and people you don't know. Funny enough, he said didn't he? he said in the, in the in the podcast that Kent Peters said to him before. Um, he was like. How many of the fights do you remember? Because they went to a competition together in Canada, and he was yeah. like, oh, "Not really." About the was, nerves, wasn't like, it? it was about the exactly. Nerves. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to yeah. remember your fights anyway. Like, yeah, yeah, right. That's it. And you, know, you know, like the, the worst thing, obviously, when you lose, is if I'm texting the group after and saying you lost because you feel a bit embarrassed and yeah. stuff like that. But then I just, I do always remind myself, you know, I'm, I am going out there and trying either way. Yeah. Yeah. One of the. Every, every time, every time me and Kane go, say, because we've been to quite a few together, you know, we get home and we've gone away from each other. We're texting each other like what we could have done better and what yeah. to do next time, what we're going to work on that week, and yeah, it definitely helps out with letting you know. Yeah, what you and we've like, and you want to like, get back to it immediately. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. We like some sometimes I'll come back from a competition. I want to train literally as soon as I get back from the mm-hmm. competition, and. It's just good having people pushing each other as well. And I think that's extended yeah. to like Mark and Scott and, and people like that. And then as well, 
but the things I learn from the comp, I can just pass on to them as well, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah definitely. Is I'm, that why you were talking about competing again, Nick? Do you yeah, want to kind of... Then who? I like watch honest, honestly because okay, I'm, I'm going to compete as well. Yeah, when I when I started jujitsu, right at um, Tunbridge, competition was like the be all and end all of everything. Yeah, like right, everything we were doing was like right. We're doing this for this competition that's coming up in this amount of time. So you know, we want as many competitors as possible to go. And I th- and, and bearing in mind, it was a, one of those times where. You, people are trying to grow their gyms and more members and stuff like there's you know to, to survive essentially because we were in a leisure center you know pull it, putting the mats out and put them away you know at the angel center in tunbridge and then you know which then did again in the in ashford at the church hall and everything so that was that for quite a few years that's what it was like so more people who are paying their seven quid a session and competing attracts other people and shows what we're doing you know that kind of thing but it was very yeah. very encouraged like and that came down from Wilson, Simon, Dickey. The thing was, you know, we go to competitions as a big group as possible. Uh-huh. And Dave, Dave, and Paul always said, like, if anyone is going to compete anywhere, we'll go. So I, I drove down to, or uh, Paul drove the three of us. We went down to Wales, and I was the only one competing in the Welsh Open before. Like, so because yeah, I went, mad. they come down with me, you know. Yeah, both both so both of them and that was that was that. We all go. It's like no, fine, meet at the meet in Tunbridge and I'll drive and we went and did it. And it's like if anyone's okay. competing, go. Well that's what you guys do for the English this year, isn't it? It's like when um a few people are competing and just uh, go I, go. You know what? I've got, well, I haven't done it enough, but I will... forwards, but like yeah, yeah. No, that, that that was wicked. Having quite a few of us yeah. there, I thought this just is so much nicer. It's Same just... for grappling industries, like oh, for wicked. future competitions. If I can if I can make it, I will like make sure that I'm there. Yeah. Just because it's um it was a good day. Do you know what? I had a really fun yeah, yeah, day. I couldn't yeah. talk. I was yeah. I was having a really good time. But back, back, <laughs> right? Like back, like a long time ago. You know, when you feel like, right, they're they're really pushing the competition. So, they do I did feel like, a, you want to do well because you want to show uh, the the coaches and stuff how you've progressed. So you, yeah. you know, there was, you know, there's a lot. Um, everyone sort of blue belts and white belts. So you want to like show them that you're moving uh-huh. forward. So there's quite a bit of pressure and like a way to show people if you. are you know, it felt to me like, oh, we're not doing, I'm not doing good. It's getting knocked out of the fight and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. First round. And you know what I mean? So, so it, I felt really pressurized. And then um, when, um, you know, like these, that's why I've sort of shied away from doing um, competitions because when I got my blue belt, I thought, all oh, right, now I've got my blue belt. I've got nothing to lose. You know what I mean? I'm just starting out with a new grade. I'll go and compete, compete. Then I got there and I was like, just had these doubts of like, oh, well, maybe I'm not good enough to even like hang with those guys doing this or that. And yeah. it, it's really mixed feelings about it, but I'd really like to, I've always done competitive sport. I'd really like to do do it, but I get very anxious and nervous about it. But I think that stems from not really being that good. Like white belt comps, like for me, I was, I was like, I might do a couple of things good, but then, do you know what I mean? It's a bit of a, yeah. a lottery to a degree. Mm. I feel like you feel more Loader. pressure if you got to a higher belt. As a white belt, it's like fuck it, I'm a white belt. You might oh, well the run, opposite. You know? As a really, belt, like that. yeah, yeah. I'm looking for the next round. Hungry, like now. Yeah. I feel like I'm confident in my game. Like I feel like I could go in to a competition. And, like I, you know, I don't think I'm going to get made a fool of by another purple belt. I think it'll be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I might lose, but I don't think it's going to be ridiculous. You know, me. Yeah, I guess so. Right, you've got enough confidence in your own ability but that's it but I, I think that it, it, for me well it's interesting talking to Ian about this because Ian's competed at every grade mm-hmm. and he said oh man it gets easier because you start to know gold. Me. I think he's got gold at every yeah. grade I think <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, but he's, he's, even he said didn't he like so when we're watching one of his fights back and your fights back and that and you, you're looking at it going I don't recognize that person doing jiu-jitsu there that's not Ian said he wouldn't have done one single thing that he did in the video now. And, yeah, he and said that the other day, didn't he? That's mad. Yeah. Yeah, and you're looking at it, and you're, I don't think it makes sense. 
Yeah, but, but what he was doing was not wrong necessarily, but he's like, I'd have done it completely different. Every single position I was in, I'd have done something different to what I just wanted. Mm -hmm. He had only been training like six months or something. Yeah, that well. yeah that's <laughs> mad, isn't it? I wouldn't have been that brave. It took me about a year to build up the courage to go along, and then I was shitting myself yeah, I'm not, before I, it on. I haven't even got to the point yet that I think, I don't know, that I would be able to compete because I feel like at the it? moment. I think at yeah. the moment, though, I think with the injury that I had, um, I think no. that kind of. It made me feel like um, I need a bit more training before I go into something like that. But the Kumite was really nice because it was kind of more of a like a gentle introduction into what it's like at competition, and maybe mm -hmm. a little bit more nervy because you know everyone there. Oh no! Everyone knows what's happening. Thing yeah. is, you, you, that was cool. That was fun. Yeah, you'll never be prepared for a comp, I don't think. Like, yeah. you, you always yeah, I anxiety. Yeah, I, had, I, had, I had the I worst anxiety I've ever had at the last one. Like, mm. really bad. Like, on the train up there, and it was just yeah. me and my girlfriend who went up there. And I didn't want to talk or anything. I was just really zoned in. But it's probably yeah. the best I did, because I just had a bit more fun with it, and I wasn't sort of as froze up. I froze up a few times. Mm -hmm. But I do, yeah. still, I do still believe that I've got the best to come in comps going forward. Mm. I just feel like I'm learning all the time. Yeah, I've, definitely, only, I've only just been starting at Blue Belt, you know, six months or something. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you're still like that, learning all the time, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's it. But you could be fighting someone that's been at Blue Belt for four years. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the guy that won in my division at the English, he'd clearly been a white belt for a long time. He was fucking triangling. He every, I think he got a triangle win in every fucking matchup that he got in. And, and like, what other experience has he got? Like, like, what other grappling experiences the guy got? Like, uh -huh. I remember in my, in my English Open, that legendary performance that happened <laughs> that one time. The guy, the guy that I lost to first. Where, the one where you come back when I medal. He was like, he had like cauliflower. I'm not joking. He had like, his ears were like that. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like a white belt, and I was like, "Oh, mate, played rugby before or something." Yeah, rugby, mate. That's exactly what it was. I, you know, like it's like when Warren Berry came training in Tunbridge, like as a white belt, but he's a fucking judo black belt and competed for Team GB. Do you know what I mean? And and what Ches was saying as well, like before he started ten years of nogi yeah 10 years of nogi yeah yeah badly so when you watch all that sort of stuff you imagine watching like i've seen footage of like john jones compete in as like a blue belt and stuff <laughs> you yeah, imagine yeah. fucking <laughs> up, like, like, yeah. it's mad yeah could be yeah. white belt yeah that's it imagine him at adcc or something with his yeah. belt up round by his nipples <laughs> yeah <laughs> just one of those pretzel knots that's it. <laughs> like one bit coming up here one just like sort of <laughs> <laughs> that's what right. i think i think it's like um i'd like to feel i feel now like i think i can have fun and relax more to do mm -hmm. it and it not be like too serious <clears throat> yeah. say that now but i don't know whether like i'm sure like, i'll be really anxious when you're there man yeah. it's fucking different i, I want to win but yeah, yeah. you I can't prepare for it. I think that sometimes you could go into it and be really confident and relaxed or whatever and just think, ah, it's a laugh, blah, 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 and you do really well. And then other times you come into it too relaxed or too, it just depends on the day, yeah. I guess. But, yeah. Yeah. Me more, personally as well, if, if, I've got, if I've got a comp that I know I'm doing and it's like two months away, I, I actually think that harms my training. I don't, you know, lose focus a bit of training and I'm not yeah. picking up as much as I'm just focusing on... You know, I don't know. That's how I feel. Anyway. I'm trying to when predict what you're going to do and stuff. Yeah, when I'm, not myself up there, yeah. I'm learning constantly. I feel like my progression is just like that. Whereas if a comp's coming, it feel like it's just like, Whoa, just yeah, yeah. yeah. I would beat myself up over little mistakes I was you're making. You're probably a lot more self-critical coming up to a comp. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. you're thinking that's how like, I, felt. I was like, oh fuck no. You're, you're looking at all your own weaknesses in the whole small game. You can I just get yeah. out of this and this because they're obviously going to be able to do this. So you probably get. A lot more self-critical, maybe a little bit more negative about mm -hmm. your own training before the comp. I think I think it's that you you uh, think right. I've got to focus on what I'm going to do in that five yeah. minutes, rather than going oh right. You go, I don't want to change my game because I've got a comp. You don't want to learn stuff that you might like because you'll change what you're doing and then you won't be good enough yet at it to use it in the comp. So you'll be yeah. like right. I'll stay where I am and try and just yeah. do what I'm doing. I guess there's a certain art to preparing for a comp as much as there is yeah. competing like in the comp. Seriously. Yeah, doing more and more comps, I think, is going to be a good thing, mentality-wise. Six weeks, you just train as normal, then you go and just do the comp. It's like irrelevant to what you're training. You just chuck it in, yeah. like, <laughs> periodically. 
you know what I mean? So like you're not training for the comp, you train yeah. and then you just yeah. go and see what happens at a comp. Doesn't matter, win, lose, whatever, doesn't matter. Then you come back, carry on training, I'll oh, do it again. Do you know what I mean? It's, if you're not yeah. specifically putting that as a thing, the target that you're aiming at. Well, yeah. unless you know specifically who you're up against and what their style is like, I suppose you can't really prep for it that well because you've got no idea of what or who you're going to be blue, blue, facing. Like blue, purple belt, like no one's really got like everything down. Do you know what I mean? No. They, it's like they mm -hmm. might learn something new and suddenly decide that they want to do a different type of game that week before. And so yeah. It's, yeah. I think another thing to cons like think about as well is that uh, whoever you are going to be up against is probably feeling the same way about you as well thinking like oh fuck he might be really good and they are yeah, exactly. they're doubting like, themselves looks, so. oh i was the only in masters too <laughs> <laughs> that's it i get to compete in the masters now that's right they looked at they looked at the otter and they were like are you sure he's under oh, the <laughs> <laughs> There must have been no one in this category. Before that I could go in for like Masters 5 in like the Euros yeah. or the Worlds. No one would question. I lit and I might yeah. be able to do well. Yes, I reckon you should, mate. Because no one's going to ask for your ID, are they? I might. Like... <laughs> <laughs> you're interested in coaching at all? Sorry? Is Nick, Nick, are you interested in coaching at all? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to. Um... He hasn't got the patience I... for it. <laughs> no, I'd like to teach. I'd like to teach stuff. I like to. I like. Uh, that's why I've been enjoying doing the open mat on the Friday, and because um, like most times there's been like four, four, four of us. I think, but different four people depending. It's usually like Luke and Ches. So there's someone like that who comes in because of shift work or whatever, or day off, or dad. You know those guys. And then um, um, Big Matt, the white belt, the police guy, mm -hmm. um, and then that's it was just that. me. And, Pat, Matt and Pat, yeah, it was just me and him one week and we just went over some stuff and did specific, do you know what I mean? And I was showing him some tech and he was like, oh, because when you're doing it like that, I've never, I've never done it the other way around where I show people things really. Mm. And then like, um, that was, I really felt, I, I get a kick out of like showing someone something if I know it. And you do I a good job of like explaining that, concepts oh, yeah. and making certain concepts seem like, yeah. You don't have to do overthink you? it. Sometimes I really do feel like that, and I'm thinking about every tiny little minute movement and detail. And sometimes those things are important, and you need those details to do the technique. But mm. sometimes you just spend too much time thinking about it, and you forget what the fucking objective of what you're trying to do is. But if you're yeah, trying to sweep yeah. someone, take it's away really, a post, really and, you know, off balance them on that side. That's what you want to you do. Keep, you don't want to super simple, but mm -hmm. like it's very difficult to to say that when someone's because yeah. anyone, you've all been in the same boat and you start doing jiu-jitsu, you're like, fuck, this is brilliant and there's loads to learn. It's really exciting, really interesting. And you want to like try all these different things all, all, all at the same time. Mm -hmm. But without, without like um, really understanding what your objective is anyway at all. It's because it's, yeah. really hard to, <laughs> it's really hard to picture in your head exactly what you're trying to do when you've never done anything like that yeah, before. It's so you kind of rely, your crutch becomes the, um, the technique itself. Yeah. So you feel like you have to do everything the way the technique is shown and you kind of forget about the bigger picture because you can't mm -hmm. see the bigger picture. It's not there in front yeah. of your face. So you're thinking yeah. that is, that's my route to that objective because I don't know any other way to do it. Yeah. So, so then the techniques become almost like a crutch because they're like, you're very much reliant on doing things perfectly, whereas you, it's not the case. You kind of just have to remember like for sweeps, for example, like taking away a post and off balance yeah. them that way. And um, it, can, it can like work for anything. You can bastardize pretty much any technique you want to and call it what you want but you know i mean obviously there's more efficient ways of getting to certain positions than others and those techniques mm -hmm. do solidify and help that but um initially Laurie, kind of Laurie, said the other week. Right, i want to get in Laurie, so, Laurie said the other week that this was like um something that really resonated with me was you saying um that say there's there's thousands of techniques from like whatever position you want to pick but it's like you've got a tool bag and in the tool bag there's a there's there's a certain amount of tools so mm -hmm. an underhook being a tool or um you know whatever you know, like that yeah that, that that you can say right i pick these three tools and that that's that goes to that technique there's there's far fewer tools that apply with all the techniques 
So once you understand, like, the What's tools... The movement got, becomes a lot less complicated. It gets a lot easier to see what you're being shown as well when you start understanding a bit of the concepts. Because at first, remember when I first started, you used to get so frustrated because by the end of a demo, I was thinking, what the fuck? Because you're watch? Like, you don't have a clue. It's not like a movement. Yeah. Element. Yeah, yeah. Like, as soon as you start understanding the concepts as to why things are done a certain way, it just means that you're kind of absorbing it all faster. You're not focusing on trying to watch and remember every little move, but as soon as someone goes, You do this for this reason, you go, Right, yeah, that makes sense. And yeah, you've just yeah, hit, you've hit right. on the head. As, as soon as you understand why you're doing something, you're not just doing it because you've been shown to do it. Yeah, you're, you're not just going through the motions of it, you're actually it. like trying to achieve something by doing it, and that yeah, made it exactly. a lot easier. And I can remember kind of that that started clicking when I came back after my knee. Like before that, I never really, I found it really frustrating because I just couldn't quite understand what I was being shown. It still does happen, but mm. I find it a lot more enjoyable now because you can kind of see I think everyone's where you go. Yeah. I like that you collect techniques or you try and remember all the techniques that are being shown. And certainly back in the day, right? You don't know where, there's no, um, continuity of uh, techniques that you do you might be doing techniques from clothes guard on one day and then the next day you come back and you're doing something from turtle and it's like yeah. so difficult difficult to like um remember this stuff going forward or the the, the tools that you're using for these things even though they're tra translatable from one yeah. position to another you don't get that you're just seeing random well that's it because if you're only training a couple of times a week as well, because I normally only do two sessions a week, can't really do the day classes and stuff. If you're, it, at the moment, it seems like, we're just before we um, can go back, it seemed like everything was leading in, like the Mondays and Wednesdays were all kind of leading into stuff and week from week you'd be working on the same thing. And that makes it a lot easier because if you're doing completely different moves from one week to the next, and you're only training a couple of times a week. It's, yeah, you take longer to collate all the information together to make sense of it. So you can't remember, it you can't remember it. No. No, I, I remember can't. being frustrated. I remember yeah. used to being frustrated. Like you'd be shown a group of moves and you'd be like, I love, I really like that. I can use that in my game. But how the, yeah. how the fuck do I get there? But you yeah. just don't know how you get how you it's made to be. And you've just kind of got to figure it out for yourself. Yeah. yeah, it just takes time. It's just you, the more you go, the, the easier it gets to pick up what you're being shown. So. It's, that, um, that yeah. was that's what open mat used to be it's like you do the techniques in the week and then you go on the friday night and you, you try and like piece bits together and like oh so if we were doing this if we were like doing troubleshooting that, yeah yeah it wasn't like it is now where you, i mean it is if you if you decide to do it like that but yeah you know what i mean it's how you used to open was like right we'll all go and train but we'll all like try and piece i like what i like about the open mats is there's always uh people there like uh, Big Chris or whoever the fuck else really like making you do shit like Chris will always make me spar all the fucking time like I, I'm just sat there if I'm sat there for too long Dan Biddle will be like wait roll go and do something <laughs> and I'm like oh okay fucking hell oh, it makes you do shit you know because otherwise you can get into a, a little bit of uh, a rut where you're just I sat there watching know. people that's I what I do I like that's that what I really. built I was like hungry no. I was like the hungry kid that always like I used to, in the open mats at Tunbridge, I used to be like, uh -huh. who's, getting, who's, who's rolling, who's rolling? I used to roll like... Dude, like, every time I roll, I'm like, right, this is the one that's going to finally back. break me. Like, Make the most of this. Yeah, now, now I'm like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got chest staring at me, I'm like... Oh. Eventually you'll get to Nick, and he just lays down like this all open now. <laughs> yeah. and I try and make eye contact with Nick, and he picks his phone up like this. Yeah, no, I <laughs> I have to because then Ches will grab me and oh, that's an hour. <laughs> yeah. It's an hour like that, trying to defend and get an underhook. I saw a good video of you getting uh, smothered to death by Ian the other day. He's in like neon belly, like just swooshing your fucking face with his forearms so you can't turn into him or anything. Who? Who Nick? Yeah, Nick was, yeah, struggling. <laughs> I love that. I, I filmed him. I Ian, think. man, is so good though. It's just. He's all right. I've it's never rolled with Ian. So much better than... Oh, he's Sam still on. It's so uh, <laughs> not that good, mate. It's not worth it, to be honest. Mate, oh, Ian is like all over. His bones are sharp. His muscles are sharp. His Everything. bones are sharp. <laughs> he's sharp, <laughs> isn't he? You try and pass Ian's guard, his knees are like... Like, you know, it's horrible. Possible, we, did yeah. a, we did an advert for our beginner's course and Ian was demonstrating a move 
where it was like attacking the turtle. He was just, <laughs> but he had his shin across the back of my car. And I was literally, luckily he put music and muted the voice because all I was doing <laughs> in the turtle was just going, ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> it was so painful. <laughs> he's one of them as well. He weighs more than you think he does, I reckon. Yeah, he's like 90, he's 90 kilos. Yeah. yeah, he knows how to distribute his weight, doesn't he? 90 serious weight and Ian's lean. Yeah. Like, yeah, I want to see Ian. About all else is they've, they've all got like, really different styles as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally everyone has got really different. Yeah, it's styles. awesome, man. Honestly, I, having I that amount of testament. I think that's a bit of a testament yeah. to the club, really, because you can yeah. really drill into you can really drill into someone <laughs> a certain style from their way mm -hmm. of teaching. And I think Laurie's Laurie, kind of though, Laurie, Laurie's never been like that. Laurie, that's all credit to Laurie because yeah. he, he's allowed everyone to innovate on their own. But and I think then, that comes from his, like, he's so knowledgeable in a, like, yeah. about everything. Broad sense. He's mm -hmm. got a lot of, like, um, like, he's got a lot in his head. Like, he knows yeah, so much sure. stuff. But he'll um, also soak it up from Luke or Ian. Yeah. Whatever. Mate, he's, always, he's always willing to learn, Laws. Always. I always see him drilling with Luke and Danny. I'm like, fucking hell, that's sick. Like, I really... Laurie's, uh, Laurie's best yeah. line is this. He sits there and he goes, show me that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't matter if it's a black belt or a blue belt. He's like, show me that one then. Yeah. Like, he, he doesn't... That. He's not... He, he's indiscriminate as to who he picks things up off. So he collates, gets, he grabs all that stuff. Mm. He's got no ego for that at all. No. Yeah, and that's why everyone's got all these different styles, and everyone's allowed to learn. Because I, you, you see it honestly. People will try and dictate what people should do and why they yeah. should do it. Yeah, mm. and it's not the case. It's not the case in our club. And that's yeah, it's why we can see that because you'll see like two different. I don't know, like two different. Uh, let's say like Danny and Loz. They could teach the same technique, but it would be completely different. Like I don't know, Loz would say so. I remember. Um, Law's always emphasising, you know, jujitsu in your feet <laughs> when you go for like a triangle. You keep your cough uh, away. Yeah, don't worry about it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> keep your feet like that. And Danny was saying, point your toes down. Like yeah. Oh, yeah, when you go for yeah, it, like yeah, point yeah. towards the floor with your toes and stuff. So as long people? as you just shut up and do what you're told, <laughs> especially as a white belt, like you'll you'll be you start, you start from every one of them. As you're going along, you start unpicking what and why that person's saying that. And, mm -hmm. uh, what works just, for you? Yeah, what works yeah. for you? And what there's no you... one way to do anything. Like there's well, no that's one it. Yeah, style it shows you that. So like, and you know, like people pick up injuries and they pick up um, mm -hmm. certain like the you know like the side. Like they have to make certain movements. movements. Yeah, you, you have, have, you to, have play to compensate. Things, so they work stuff out. Like I think mm -hmm. an easy example is like Loz did that over wrap technique. Yeah. And I've always got that over wrap by taking a two on one. Yeah. Breaking it. Yeah. Scoop my arm over and get the over up this way. Uh -huh. but Loz, because he pulls well, well, his arm off this way, he's figured out that if well, he balance, them, and then shoot makes out. Him calm, he can just get the arm that way. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would That's never have thought easier of that. as well. It's easier, yeah. It's so, a like, crazy the amount of things that you would never think of unless you were told that thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, certain, you know, you take, oh, take, I'd probably figure out that movement because I understand what the goal of what okay. I'm trying to do. But there's other stuff. It's so simple. You'd never think of it yourself. You have to be yeah. told it. When you know, you're like, oh, yeah, fucking idiot. Just, oh, someone just tells you to stand up. And you're like, well. oh, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Simple, like, what am I supposed to be doing here? So I just fucking stand. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> that, is, that is classic, that is. It's like when someone's like, they feel like they have to do a technique to get onto their yeah. feet or to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They feel like they have to do something specific. Or How am I doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have to just get up. <laughs> yeah. However you, however oh, I overthink can. things sometimes because I don't want to look stupid and just do. Yeah. Why, Mark? So, I know, right? Why? It's inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't oh, help that you'll fucking jump price. on me every time I fucking breathe wrong or something. <laughs> you were helping me in a private. Got me aware, Mark. And um, what? And so you, you were. Um, like you came in with me on a private that I was mm -hmm. having with Laurie. So yeah. I have a private every single week with Laurie. Mm -hmm. I might come in and, and um, Chris, I think was watching as well. Cause I do my sessions like in a particular way. And what I want to do, it's like super, I've got it down super tailored. Yeah. You do it really well. But, but um, you see how Laurie says that stuff to me. He just goes, what are you doing? Stand up. And I'm like, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, it's good, man. You need to be, I know, but he's like, he does 
he doesn't need to molly on me like going, no, what you need to do is bring your knee, but he's like, stand up, yeah. stand up, like that, and I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like that. Like, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get up I'm like this. And yeah. Like, oh, yeah. It's no, nice no, for no. someone to talk to you, just be straight with you, yeah. because you know, if you spend too much time worrying about someone's feelings and stuff, like yeah. you're not going to be teaching them properly. You're sort of. I don't know. That's, that's my philosophy. Hour a week. Hour oh, a week. Fuck me. You don't know how to be nice, mate. <laughs> you got a clue what's going on. <laughs> I'm surprised you don't beat some of them kids up. You know. You haven't no. been to the kids' class recently, then, have you? Going home with bite marks and that. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it's interesting because, like, it's um, a lot of it is really simple and we overcomplicate a lot of it, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. But it's just so much information out there that, you know, you can watch so much stuff and you can talk to so many people that you end up, sometimes it can get a bit confused because if you, I don't know, I think especially at first when you've got no idea what you want your game to be like, you can take in sometimes a bit too much information and mm. think that, you know, it takes a while before you can just go, right, I'm good at this, my body type's like this, or I haven't uh, found that uh, yet, but I can imagine that you've got to funnel it down somehow. I think you should just revert back to very, some basic, like a couple of basic uh, positions or techniques that you know for sure. When, when it seems like there's just too much going on yeah. and you can't keep track of everything, just think, yeah. well, I know how to do this sweep and I know how to do yeah, fundamental keep stuff. this position or whatever. Mm. And then just think about that. And then yeah. it kind of you resets the brain a little you, bit. And have, have you got, because um, we spoke about that, Mark, have you, have you now narrowed down where you like want to be, like your preferred position as in your go-to and you, Matt, like you three, have you, got a thing that you like doing that you would you know a preferable position where you think well i'm confident this is the best place for me to sweep from or like submit or whatever like have you got to that point where you, that's what you want to do or are you still working out that i'm still getting there man i ain't got a fucking clue <laughs> same I, 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 top mark figure out how to give my back up quicker <laughs> <laughs> it's not drill. possible <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt, have you, Matt, have you got a, a uh, sort of go-to? I like playing off my back and I like playing sort of butterfly or uh, collar and sleeve guard a lot. Mm. But I, to, like, I really want to improve the things I'm weak at. So like, say this last six months, I've been working on guard passing so much because I knew that was like my biggest weakness. And now I feel like I'm getting a lot better at it and I want to keep going at it. And to be honest, every time I find something that I'm bad at, that's the thing I want to work on most. Yeah. yeah. Inverted Goga Platters, mate. That's all I ever do. <laughs> Brian Hall's <laughs> reverse 50 50, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reverse Kimura. I do oh, loads of shit. Oh, when I'm not God, don't get him started, mate. Do not get <laughs> Reverse Kimura. Have you watched Drew Weatherhead's instructional map on the reverse tomorrow? <laughs> oh, fuck me. Here we go. <laughs> well, well done, Matt. Well, well it's not what it is, right? It's, uh... Actually, it's, it's, just a, it's just a grip change in guard, in closed guard. Well, so let me tell you. Tell me more. <laughs> okay, I'll show you some more, but Sam's going to be shot at it. He, he looks at me with disdain when I talk about it, but now I've watched the entire series and I've been studying it, I've actually, there's a, some of them I pick out for people and you go, that would suit this person. Do you know what I mean? Because it's a lot about dragging the arm across. So basically an arm drag from full guard, yeah? And so you're thinking about putting round to the lat here like this. So you know what I mean? Taking the back. So it's, but it's grip on the wrist and then push. It's not actually like that in, the, in, in like a figure four. You pull this arm into the elbow and you're pushing this into the body. So it's like a grip rather than a reverse. It's not a reverse Kimura. It's a... Uh, like just grips basically after an arm drag and there's some really cool right. stuff in there that sounds more reasonable yeah oh. it's basically full guard with a different grip yeah you can just clickbait in it yeah he did basically didn't he he's like he knew that there was someone out there that's like got a <laughs> boner for, uh, for reverse well, kimura <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> a whole a whole dvd on it yeah it's like take my money have it. It was free, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I just love seeing people like what, because it took me a long time to like find the things that I, Poor where I felt mind. comfortable doing, you know, the sweeps. And my, mine was, I've never been a fan of knee wrestling to try and get on top. And a lot of bigger, no. heavier guys do that. 
And it's like, there's no point. Like, I can't out knee wrestle chairs, uh, Big Chris, Sausage, any of these people. If they want to go, on, I can't beat them. Chairs so, like knee wrestle, doesn't he? He's like that. I'm not being funny, Nick, but you're a bigger, heavier guy. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is what you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm that is well out of line, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm safe here. I'm at home. You can't come near me. <laughs> no offense, mate. No offense, on me. No offense, mate. But you're well fat. So well, them, them other guys. No offense, Otto. Have you ever rolled with chairs the twenty years experience of grappling? <laughs> <laughs> I have. It's not gone well. And what, what did you, mate? Did he wrestle him to his back, did you? <laughs> I tell you, I've done some privates with chairs, and when he's oh, completely oh, immobile. Yeah. Okay, that, he's that, letting me do yeah. shit. I can't even fucking do it. So, <laughs> <laughs> let alone when he's putting two percent effort in. Yeah. <laughs> Such a blooming beast, isn't he, Chaz? <laughs> yeah, fucking man. mental, man. He's always he kills been, me. Every been, time we roll, he kills me. Massive, isn't he? Well, whether he weighs nine, 88 kilos or 110 kilos, he's a hench. Yeah, he's massive. <laughs> he's, he's always fucking cute. up for it as well, isn't he? Yeah, he's really enthusiastic. He's, 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 he's always like, go, 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 fight, fight, yeah. fight. And he always surprises oh, me how it moves. He's always like, he's very, very far. Big mm -hmm. guy. He's an athletic yeah. bloke. He's very he's athletic. a massive cane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but it's fucking he's terrifying. Cool. <laughs> Chess is very analytical and he will study something you do. And like me and Chess go back and forth. I go off and I try and do something to stop his game. And I come and I do it. And he immediately recognizes it. And he might not be able to, he might be a problem for a bit. And then next week or the week after, he's come back and he's trying something to do it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. he will pick it apart to that degree for what he likes to do. Yeah. It's, he's, he's very like that. And he'll make, when he comes on a podcast, he'll have a list of things he wants to talk about written down. Organised. In in chronological and... order of what happened when. Like, yeah. He knows what's going on and he, he will break things down to, to defeat it. Like, that's his way yeah and that's hard to train against when he's already a black belt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm very good you know at what he does yeah. so. obviously i could reverse kimura you know anyone but i just choose not to oh, I'm cheers, man. Yeah. If he's too easy right arm across like that and i can get the right grips on his wrist i'll try that and i'll start something else to give him something he won't have seen that before the different grip from close yeah guard. but you've just given the game away now mate you'll be sitting there like that well if i really you go for that dvd reverse camora counters yeah that's it <laughs> then i know yeah. <laughs> counters yeah but it's it's interesting because don't you find that because Matt, you definitely roll with lots of similar people, don't you? Like, so you get to know what they like doing. Mm. And do you, do, you, do, you, do you take that as um, how to improve what you want to do, like your game or what you're doing, encountering what they do specifically, or do you concentrate on yourself? Uh, I'd, I'd say I con concentrate on myself, but I, I feel like I can be quite sneaky with stuff. Like Kane, for instance, he like started just below me just because I'd done a bit before, and then he similar level and now I'd say he's quite a bit above me but when we roll I still catch him out with sneaky stuff because Kane will tend to do um he'll get good at one thing and he does that same thing over and over and once I've caught on to it I can counter it and I'll get him once or twice but then after that he'll adapt and he'll change yeah. his game and I'm mm. really good doing this other thing and then I'll have to do it but it's good because that improves us cause keeps you on your toes it keeps you all kind of well, you brings you up, up. Well, brings yeah. you up time he does that you've got to go away and do it yeah. you know, um, Scott and Kane were all saying as well like I said earlier we've been working on passing a lot for like the last six months because you know me Mark Beck Scott Kane we all train together a lot because we're always trying to guard pass that person who's on bottom who's getting their guard pass they're getting better at guard retention and yeah. staying close yeah. guard without knowing it sort of thing just by just being an yeah. Yeah, but everyone's getting better at something all the time. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. a good thing to think about if you're getting down or whatever, or putting a bit too much pressure on yourself to remember like you are getting better from other yeah. people. And everyone yeah. training like, with you like tells that. You that. Like if someone like Matt, you do this with me. Like if you think that I've improved in something or got better, you'll tell me, and that's really nice because 
like getting a bit of feedback, whether it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. I find that helpful. Me. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but not from you. <laughs> <laughs> Just get shit off of you. It's cool though, because like you obviously want to improve, but like you also want everyone else to improve as well. So you want to win the role, right? You want to fucking yeah, win if you're doing the full spa, but you still want the other guy to be doing really well, and you want them to fucking progress and stuff. Yeah. I find and that it is hard to see people do that. It is hard to see the improvement in yourself, especially when you roll with a lot of the same people or train with mm -hmm. a lot of the same people yeah. all the time. Because if you are, you know, say me and Mark, we've been training guard passing a lot, but you know what the other person's going to do now. So right. that would be really good at defending it. It's like me and Darren. It's going to be a bit different, you know. Darren was training, up, we tra Darren's training like um, a certain routine of guard passing. And I train, been training a lot of certain... Uh, guards like that I would be doing against that so we found ourselves fighting for one one me wanting one grip and him not wanting me to have that <laughs> grip because both of our movements depend on that so thing end up breaking that yeah, exactly and then so then I reach around <laughs> like his ankle or something so he goes that so I take the grip and he breaks that and then I try and off balance him that way and then he takes do you know what I mean it, 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 like for mm -hmm. three minutes you think that's why it used to look boring when people know, know what they're doing in a way, because you're like, I know what I want to do, because he's mm. trying to do that, yeah. and to counter that, I've got to have that grip. Like, I really need it, otherwise, you know, and it you can become a bit, like hard, but then once he gets past, you're like, this is not a good day for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see that in a lot of, uh, like, I don't know, competition footage or something like that. Two high-level guys, you'll see them kind of, Doing what you it's were just really explaining then, it's like little battles, but then when it? once there is a, a development made by one person, oh, so they take the kicks edge. off. That's when it all starts yeah. fucking going. Yeah. It's like a game uh, of inches, isn't it? It's a game it is, of yeah, inches. basically. Sam, Sam goes to try and do something from an open guard or something like that, and you're like, "Well, I know. Like, if I manage to time something correctly, I've got a way better chance of getting around that leg or whatever it is." But you know, uh -huh. if you don't, he knows the odds of like. He's going to try at that point. On that point, he know he's not going to try and do anything until he knows that he's got the right tension, the right, you know, time to do it. And that's, this is that's why it's fascinating. Unless you time, watching, uh, unless you time ground game and MMA. This is why people boo ground game and MMA because they don't know what the fuck they're looking at. So it does look like fucking two dudes laying on top of each other to them. Yeah. But if you fucking can understand the importance of something like an underhook or, you know, just having a better base or something like that, you realise like that's a big thing, isn't it? It's becomes frustrating to watch sometimes, isn't it? Like sometimes it can be. Like it's really frustrating. You think like, but you don't because know. Because there's a limit. There's a time limit. In the head exactly. at the same time, yeah. you're like, you're like, oh come on! Why are they not just getting that underhook? All they need to do is get the underhook, and they can get to their knees. They can get back to their feet. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Like, yeah. Obviously, do you know what the worst thing ever is? And is <laughs> Gas. The worst thing ever is watching films and. Some dude is getting choked out with like an arm here, like oh god! And they always put like the arm under there and then on top of the head. Yeah, man. That's yeah. The it just fucking it, annoys me so much, man. So I was taught top of the head. Yeah, no, pushing, pushing into it. Like, that, that makes that. sense, but like they literally will have it like, like come in. Oh. <laughs> put your chin down. So uh, in a film, be like that, and that's that's choking them. Yeah, <laughs> it's like get fucked. Have you watched Top Boy? Uh, no, the new no. series. He like he, uh, he gets a guy. He gets a guy in like a rear naked choke, and it's like it's not, just like you described. There, really? if you like, it's not even across his neck. Yeah, it's like across the chest. His shoulder, and he's like, ah, oh, and the guy's like going limp, and you're like, <laughs> and his oh, tongue's dude. out. <laughs> watch uh, Gangs of London. Like right, could get out of that. <laughs> Gangs of London. Gotta watch it. Yeah, man. Have you really seen that? Man, it's wicked. He's done the same guy. He's done the raid. Oh, okay. Awesome. That's really great good. Film. Same guy's done the raid in the raid too. So he directed, wrote and directed, I think. Mm -hmm. So like the action scenes are amazing, like really well done. 